welcome back to another episode of something I'm making. In this particular case, I'm making a quick video on a movie I just recently watched from 1981 called My Bloody Valentine. It's a Canadian production. I'm Canadian, so I like to you know, zoom in on Canadian stuff. I'm in Vancouver, so this took place, I think, in Nova Scotia, so worlds away. It's like comparing Vancouver to New York. It's, it might as well be on a different planet, but nonetheless, it's Canadian. And so, hey, I'm going to give it some attention. So what, what drew my attention to this uh, particular video was um, something I ran across in Fangoria. So, Fangoria is a old um, magazine from the going back to the 70s, early late 70s, uh, going way back then. Came out of a, uh, uh, a came from Starlight, which is a another uh, science fiction magazine that died, but Fangoria has continued, so it just shows you that gore is more popular than science fiction in the long run. So, there you go. Uh, there's, yeah, there we go. Um, <coughs> I happen to love Starlog. It's a great old magazine. If you can find it on the net, it's worth looking at. But, uh, in this particular case, we're focusing in on Fangoria. Fangoria used to deal with, you know, just slasher movies and a little bit into sci-fi, but more in you know, horror. And so, like The Howling, for example, uh, and My Bloody Valentine. Funhouse is the feature here, but the one I'm focusing in on here is My Bloody Valentine. And, uh, like I said, I just watched it. It was a lot of fun uh, to look back at. And I am going to try and find where the article is. There we go. There is the article. Yeah, so, yeah. My Bloody Valentine. Uh, yeah. So, if you want to stop and read this, go right ahead. Uh, there's a couple of really good... Um, reviews of this movie. I don't do reviews of movies. They're just a little too much work. But for those who want to get a good review of this movie, I recommend Brian Tennant's uh, review of My Bloody Valentine, the 1981 version, as well as Kill Count. He also covers it pretty well. Um, this particular movie has some pretty good effects, um, all practical, of course, because it's 1981. But um, at first, you know, back in the day, there was this weird scenario going on back in the 80s where the feeling was that uh, horror movies were going to corrupt our children and uh, you know, there was a satanic panic going on. And so what happened is the ratings people decided to edit the hell out of everything in the 80s. And so all the really best special effects, practical effects, um, were removed from the movie. And so you ended up with essentially a movie that was unwatchable. Because realistically, the, the gory deaths are what kind of capture your attention. And one of the things about horror, is, if you know anything about it, is that it isn't about just being gross, it's about capturing your attention. Young people like to have their attention captured. Uh, something that's really gory and weird gets your attention. Uh, it has a sort of a visceral effect. And um, so the best scenes from this movie taken out, and of course that would ruin the movie. Um, there are restored versions, and I made an attempt to update, upload some of them. 
uh, to my page. Um, but yeah, you can usually find this movie out there somewhere. I think it's a fun kind of like Canadian production. Uh, has a couple of names in there that you'll see come up over and over again in Canadian productions, particularly uh, Don Franks. You gotta check out his IMDb page. He's got quite a history in the Canadian uh, film industry, and uh, I think he's you know, national treasure, really. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put this up on uh, archive.org on my page if you're anybody's interested, and check it out. That's going to be my coverage of this movie. Just finished watching, like I said. I liked it. Um, it stands out as, you know, up there with Black Christmas, I would say. Um, so, give it a look. Talk to you later.